It's a rather disappointing turnout. There's obviously a lot of people missing, but um, but we'll get on with it anyway. So where are we? Screens there, good. Um, so I'm just going to go quickly over a couple of the resources that are available, just to make sure you remember what's online on Canvas for Biome 13. It might help you. And then I'm going to give you a rather hard example question. It's much harder than you'll get in the exam, but what I want you to do is get together in groups and discuss it. And, and when you go from thinking, oh, this is really hard, there's no way I'll do this, to having had a discussion and finally getting some sort of solution, that will hopefully give you the confidence to tackle the much easier questions you'll already to get in the exams. And we'll have a similar session anyway, just before the exam, to, to, to go over this again. So if you look on Canvas, you'll find a summary a bit like this, which, which summarizes all the different techniques. This is under the, the modules section of the Biome 13 uh, Canvas entry, so where all the, the handouts and things are as well, in the, in the very first section. So this is, this is taking a snapshot from last year's Canvas, but it's in more or less the same, same, situ um, same position on the, on the Canvas page as, as last year. So if you look there, you click on the modules bit on the left, and then you'll find there's a summary of different techniques uh, listed on there. And so it covers more or less everything, although there are a few gaps. And I'm sure you can get together and fill in the gaps as, as you need to be as a, as a, as a, as a sort of cohort. Um, or in little groups. That, and, and that'll help you with your revision as well, obviously. And then also a reminder, there is a a mock-up of a, a question paper online which you can look through. Looks a bit like this. There may be some slight changes to the wording of it uh, this year compared with the version that's online, um, particularly this A, B, C, D, E bit. I think we may have changed. Yeah, well, I think we changed part A. I mean, we haven't written the paper for this year, but we, we, we changed it last year. I haven't changed it in the mock-up. We changed part A. I'll show you in a minute what we changed it to last year. And we also gave some reading time before we asked you to to do the question. So time where you were supposed to read but not write any notes to force everybody to read through the question first rather than rushing in a panic into doing something and making sure you make a, a sensible choice about the parts you have. Um, so when, when we'll go over this again just before the, before the actual exam. We'll do another re a revision session. But um, just remember to keep in mind the split of the marks. It's 40% for section A and it's section B that carries 60%. So... You, you know, you can get most of your marks on section A, that's probably the easiest section, um, but you do need to be able to have a stab at section B and, and pick up some marks on it. And it's relatively easy to pick up a few marks on section B. It is the harder part, section B, but it's the part that's really, um, it's really what this course is about. It's the part B, as you'll see, is can you solve a, a research problem? We give you a research problem, we say, these people have seen this, what would you do next? Or how would you find something out and we'll see some examples of that. Um, when you're doing the exam paper, when you get round to it, which is some months from now, do remember to allocate your time appropriately. It's 40% for part A, so try and allocate 40% of your time to part A. Uh, if you think you're going to do better on part A than part B, maybe you'll allocate a bit more than that, but certainly you wouldn't want to allocate more than an hour to it, would you? So, um, I mean, it comes out, if you do the maths, at approximately 25 minutes per Part A question, because you're asked to do two questions in Part A and 70 minutes for the Part B. And so the questions look a little bit like this. This is from the mock-up paper, so you can find this online yourself. You've got the Part A. You're asked to pick two out of this list of five and write about them with regard to these things, A, B, C, D, E. So you can see there's roughly um, one subject from each of the different lecture courses. So I think you've got 11 lectures, haven't you, in total? So we're asking you, we're going to put five out of those 11. Obviously, it could just be one aspect of one of those lectures, such as talk about fluorescence microscopy is, is one of the questions here. That's obviously just a small part of the lectures you got from Alessandro de Mayo. Um, or it could be more broad. It could just be high-throughput screening for drug discovery, which is pretty much everything that, that Luke Alderwick talked to you about. And then... We have these more sort of open-ended questions at the bottom, which, as I say, is really designed to, to see whether you can take the information we've given you and you can use it. So part A, you can get a pretty good mark just from repeating the lecture notes. We want to see a little bit more than that, but basically if you, 
if you understand what part of the lecture note is relevant and you can repeat that, you can get quite a good mark. Part B, it's really not enough to repeat the lecture notes. The question is saying, um, can you work out in a real world problem how you would apply the information from the lectures to that problem? And are there specific things about this problem that mean it's more amenable to one solution than another solution? Um, and so there are a couple of example questions with some bullet points of how you might answer them on, on the mock-up exam that's online. Um, so I say the wording of this ABC bit has changed a bit last year compared to what's on the mock paper. Um, so instead of asking what is it used for, we've asked uh, what is the technique and what are its basic principles. So that was the original intention of the, of the part A on the mock paper. What is it used for? It's, can you explain basically you know, the fundamental thing it does, and then can you explain with the rest of it how you would apply that, that fundamental thing? So, for example, NMR is used to look at the magnetic resonance of atoms. That's the fundamental principle of it. That's what it's used for. But actually, it's applied. That use is applied to solving structure or to looking at ligand binding or to looking at dynamics of structure or so on. So those, those, those are the, that's the sort of direction. Can you explain the basics of the method? And then can you explain what questions can be addressed with once, you, once that basic principle has been outlined and what the limitations might be and what the disadvantages um, and advantages of the technique might be. So for NMR, again, if I pick that as an example, there's obviously um, a maximum size of protein you can handle, and that maximum size is increasing as the magnets go up, so I don't currently know exactly where we are. Um, but... Uh, um, and, and specific techniques can pu push it further. Um, whereas X-ray crystallography, you're only generally getting a static structure, and NMR, you can get a dynamic structure. So those are the sorts of things you might balance up in one of those answers. So, th so that's just a sort of reminder of what's on Canvas that you can access to help you. I'm going to say what, I, what the main point of the day is to answer a, a question which I'm setting up for you. I say this is, this is quite a lot harder than what you'll get in the exam, because in the exam we might have a question like this, but we'd break it down into sub-stages. But because I want you to do this in a group, and I want, you to, I want you to read it to start with and think, I don't know what to do with this, and then I want you to spend time to think it through and say, actually, I do know what to do with this, and maybe that I do know what to do with this comes out of the discussion. And I've used the same question for the last two, two or three years as, as one of the revision sessions. And, and people do go through those phases, first saying, I don't know what to do with this, and then after discussing, saying, I do know what to do with this, and ideas come out, and then everybody's happy. So, and that's the stage I want you to get to, to go, well, that's how research works, right? You have the moment where you think, I don't really know what I'm doing next. And then you go away and you think about it, and you say, I do know what I'm doing next. This is what I'm going to do, and this is why it's a good idea. So you can read this for yourselves. Um, basically, at this point, split yourselves up into groups of four or five. Obviously, the chairs can be rearranged in this room, a bit close together at the moment, but sort yourself up so you can actually talk with each other in groups of four or five um, and do that. But before, actually, I'm going to just take this off the screen for a minute because there's one thing I wanted to remember to say, uh, which was this. Where are we? There's still 14 people, according to this list, who haven't signed up for a critical review so if you know any of these people, some of them may not be on the course anymore, which might, might be why they're, they're there, but if you know any of these people, or, or you are one of these people, according to this Canvas page, you still haven't signed up for one of the critical review articles. Um, and obviously they are due soon. I can't remember what the exact deadline was, but it's, it's only a few weeks away, isn't it? So the idea was that people could get started weeks ago. So um, if your name is on that list, please make sure you pick an article and please check what the deadline is. I can't remember what the deadline is. And make sure you get your critical review written in time. Are they not? No. Well, I know at least one of them is, but there's on a leave of absence. But um, um, I only recognise one name from the MRS. Maybe the others have just not turned up for the course. I'll check with Kari. Maybe they've been registered on the course, but not actually turned up in the end, because that happens. I, I didn't manage to do that yet. But OK, I mean, if everybody thinks that everybody's done then that's great. Um, right, where were we? So I should pause the panopto because there's no point in me recording.